Hey guys, this is Noah with Sparksight. We're a video production team that creates a lot of cool content, and our goal here is to make video easy. So today I wanna to talk about computers, computer parts and stuff like that, because I know a lot of people in the editing world really struggle with their computer. It's a, an obstacle in their way. And a big thing for me is that a computer, the thing that you're working with, should just be a tool and it should get out of your way. It shouldn't be the thing that is constantly getting in your way, constantly slowing you down. I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to finish a project and having to deal with uh, stuttering, hitching, slowing down every time you try to play back your edit. It's just, it's not good. Here at Sparksite, we use Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects to do our video editing and animation motion graphics and compositing. And these two programs are computational powerhouses. They will just eat up everything you throw at them. So what I really wanna focus on today are when you're putting together a system for video editing, for animation, for motion graphics, for all of that kind of stuff, what should you focus on? What actually matters in uh, building a system, putting together a system that will help you the most. Really, there is no one size fits all answer for what the best computer for editing is. There is no linear scale from worst computer for everything to best computer for everything. It's entirely application dependent. And that is kind of unfortunate because it means that no matter what you're doing, you're gonna have to do a bit of research, kind of look online at a lot of different places that have benchmarks available for in this particular program, for this particular use case, this is the parts that you should focus on. This is what you should consider including in your computer. A great place to start for that kind of research would be an awesome website called Puget Systems. Uh, they're a system builder themselves, but they also have tons of benchmarks and articles uh, and recommendations for what parts you should look at. And there's no way to make a video like this perfectly timeless. And so going into the future, whenever there's new parts that are coming out, because there's always new parts coming out, Puget is one of the best places to go to see how the new stuff stacks up against the old stuff and if it's worth upgrading, stuff like that. Like I said before, here at Sparksite, we regularly use After Effects and Premiere. So that's what we're gonna be tailoring this particular set of parts towards. The most important component in your computer as far as editing performance goes is your CPU or your central processing unit. This is an example of a CPU here. It's a Core i9-9900K, a fairly modern processor. Um, it has eight cores. And what that means is that it has eight separate little, essentially mini processors stitched together, multiple workers that can do a lot of different things at the same time. Now, I wanna clear up a common misconception that occasionally comes up. And that's that the more cores that you have, that it's all, your processor's always better in all cases. That's just not true. Uh, essentially, what a core does is it gives the processor an ability to do more than one thing at once, but there's a fundamental trade-off in the manufacturing process because of thermal limitations and other things. The more cores that you add onto a processor, in most cases, those individual cores operate at a lower frequency. They're slower overall. Um, and so while these fancy, like, 18-core processors are very expensive, they aren't always the best when it comes to programs that aren't able to take advantage of those additional cores. Programs that can spread out their workload across a bunch of different cores um, are things like SolidWorks, CAD, uh, maybe big render farms and stuff like that. That's not actually the case for Premiere and After Effects, at least to a great degree. After Effects certainly has in the past few years moved far away from having support for lots of multi-threaded workloads. Specifically, After Effects used to have this thing called multi-core rendering, where they could spread out rendering multiple frames across different cores, but that's been phased out. And nowadays, After Effects is a fairly single-threaded application, which means it doesn't actually take that much advantage of having a whole bunch of cores. Which for us actually is kind of good news because it means we don't have to spend $2,000 on a 9900 XE. We can go for a 9900K, which is around $500. This is a massive savings considering that the 9900 XE actually underperforms in most After Effects tasks compared to this CPU, which is $1,500 cheaper. So while we selected an Intel CPU for this build, I wanna make it known that that's not because I'm favoring Intel. AMD in the past few years, which is Intel's big competitor, has come in strong with a lot of other options for processors as well. The main reason we went with Intel uh, is because it's something I'm more familiar with, the platform's more mature and stuff like that. But that might not be the case in a couple of months. It's, they're, they're very neck and neck at the moment. So like always, I recommend checking the benchmarks, going online to different websites, seeing what other people are saying about what the current uh, best CPU is for your particular workload. For us, it's Premiere and After Effects, so that's why we went with a 9900K. So the next component that's really important to think about is your graphics card. 
or GPU, graphics processing unit. This is a special card that operates separately from the processor. In some computers, like laptops especially, there isn't a separate dedicated graphics card. The CPU just does that work. But in terms of having a computer that's gonna perform well and help you in, in the editing life, having a dedicated graphics card is, is pretty essential. The thing about graphics cards is that they operate differently than CPUs. Instead of having a relatively small number of cores doing individual tasks, graphics cards can have thousands of little tiny simple cores doing simple tasks, but doing a whole bunch of them. And this really helps when it comes to rendering graphics and putting them on the screen. Obviously, this kind of calculation is really helpful for people playing video games who wanna have their video games running really fast on their computer, but it's also helpful for editors as well. And in specifically in the sense that Premiere and After Effects have a lot of different components and effects which are accelerated by the GPU. They can use the, the specific architecture and hardware of your GPU to speed them up in ways that the CPU couldn't. Good examples of this are After Effects uh, Gaussian Blur effect, as well as Video Copilot's amazing Element 3D plugin. Both of those things take advantage of the GPU uh, and are able to drastically accelerate how fast they render. Just like with the CPU, it's important not to focus on just spending the most amount of money and to get a really expensive graphics card to, to do that work. As it turns out, there's a lot of diminishing returns when it comes to spending more and more money on a graphics card. There are super fancy cards called NVIDIA Quadro cards, which are thousands and thousands of dollars, that are meant for high-end professional 3D modeling workflows and stuff like SolidWorks and CAD. And this is not, it's not necessarily gonna tank your performance in Premiere or After Effects, but it is not going to offer you any real benefit over something more like this, which is technically just an enthusiast gaming graphics card. Uh, I mean, it's not cheap, it's an RTX 2070 for a little under $500, but we could have doubled the amount that we spent on this, got a 2080 Ti for $1,000, and not really seen any significant appreciable gain in performance in either After Effects or Premiere. And this just comes down to the way that those programs are coded. They're not actually taking advantage of that additional horsepower. Like I said before, it's always important just to check out the benchmarks, check out what people are saying online because it's sometimes it's easy to save a whole bunch of money and get something that performs just the same as something much more expensive. So the next thing that's important to take into consideration when putting together, assembling some kind of system for video editing is your memory. So your memory or your RAM, random access memory, is the thing that stores all of your sort of short-term files. Everything that your computer needs whenever it's accessing stuff right in the moment, that is stored in RAM. RAM is important because programs like After Effects just eat it up. It just creates a giant, unquenchable, unholy fire, There's an enormous bottomless pit of absurd RAM-sucking nonsense. <laughs> And so if this was just a video about Premiere and editing performance in Premiere, even in the world of 4K plus footage, 32 gigabytes tends to be enough for video editing. But since After Effects is part of this equation, we sprung for as much RAM as we could fit into this system. And I recommend that for pretty much anyone putting together a system nowadays. RAM is cheaper than it has been in a while, at least at the time of filming this video. So I just recommend springing for as much as you can get into your system. You'll probably also notice when looking around at different models of RAM that there are a lot of different qualities like frequency and timing and speed and stuff like that that you'll see people throwing around that while they can make a difference, I wouldn't really focus on them if this is your first time dealing with all this stuff, putting together a system to begin with. A lot of different benchmarks have demonstrated that in terms of real world performance in Premiere and After Effects, different RAM speeds within reason don't really make a difference. So buy RAM from like a reputable um, brand like Corsair or G-Skill or something like that uh, of the size that you want and you're most likely gonna be good to go. Lastly, I wanna draw your attention to the storage. When it comes to storage, it's the whatever mechanism you're using to hold all of your long-term stuff, your project files, footage, your Windows installation or, or Mac installation, whatever it is, all of that is stored on your storage, hence the name. So the traditional way of doing things was by using a actual hard drive, a hard drive disk, HDD, as you'll usually see it abbreviated. Um, and hard drives are interesting because they actually physically store the data on magnetic disks that actually a little head has to go back and forth and read it off of the disk. 
Nowadays, solid state drives are massively phasing out traditional hard drives, and that's because they use a totally different architecture. They use semiconductor chips instead of the physical magnetic disk, and this allows them to read and write way, way faster. This one here is a special kind of SSD. This is called an NVMe SSD, and it uses a similar technology for storing the data, but the way it actually connects to the processor is through something called an M.2 connector, which is directly on the motherboard and gives it a much, much faster read-write time than even these two. However, as you're probably seeing as a running theme with this video, this will give you a somewhat of a noticeable difference in performance in some situations, depending on what you're using it for. But most of the time, when it comes to the choice between these and this, these solid state drives are a much bigger leap up from the hard drive than this is from the regular solid state drive when it comes to editing in Premiere and After Effects. In 2019, I wouldn't really recommend anything less than a solid state drive for your main boot drive and at least one other drive, like even a hard drive to store your projects and uh, footage and all of that stuff. And the reason I say that is because one of the biggest things you can do to improve performance in Premiere is to separate out your project files and footage from the place where you have Windows, Mac or whatever, uh, and Premiere installed. Get them on separate drives and you can get things moving a lot faster because it can read write to both places simultaneously. The sort of optimal like dream configuration, which is what I tried to replicate here, is where you have a solid state drive which has Premiere and all of your programs installed onto it. You have a solid state drive which has your footage, active projects, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you have one more drive which you use specifically for After Effects and Premiere's media cache, which is the sort of thing it used to write quick temporary preview files and stuff like that. Having that all be set up in this way is gonna give you the greatest possible boost in performance when it comes to read, write, both in After Effects and Premiere. Um, really though, if you had to just limit yourself to the sort of the cheapest possible option that will give you the greatest benefit, at least just having a solid state drive for your programs in Premiere and some other drive that has your project files and footage on it. That is sort of the bare minimum that I would recommend. So to summarize, the four things that are the most important to pay attention to when putting together a system either yourself or through some other vendor are your processor, your graphics card, your RAM, and your storage. Get those four things aligned based on the principles I talked about and you're gonna be good to go in most cases. So going forward, uh, these four parts here are what we selected for our build because they were very optimal for what we needed right now. And we're gonna have links in the description for all these different parts or whatever is comparable at the time. Um, but into the distant future, I always recommend just people going online, looking at websites like Puget Systems and really seeing what is applicable for their use case at the current time. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about how to make video easy, then please subscribe to SparkSight. And if you have your own ideas about you know, what parts you like and what things you like to take into consideration when putting together a computer, then definitely leave that in the comments below. Well, yeah, awesome. I'll see you next time.